My name is Jeremy DeVries. I'm a solution architect at Western Computer, and I'm very excited today to show you a very brief demonstration of our D365 wine trade solution built right on top of Microsoft's D365 Business Central. Now, this is intended for anybody who's buying and selling wine. This would be somebody like wine distributors. We implement the deep functionality within Microsoft's Business Central for things like inventory management, core accounting, financial reporting, and things like that. But we've enhanced it for those in the wine space. So handling things like compliance, so item registrations, label approvals, state licensing, things such as chargebacks, so depletion allowances, sample billbacks, bad bottle credits, and even integrating with your 3PLs, among a number of other things. And a few of those things I'll highlight in today's demo. So to highlight a few of the key features of our solution, I'm gonna go ahead and walk through a, a pretty common task for us, which is creation of a sales order. Now, right now I'm logged in to the main role center of Business Central, and I can create a new sales order by just clicking on this link on my main login. go ahead and type in the customer name and it will pre-populate everything it knows about the customer such as things like payment terms and address and so on. Now at the very top you're going to notice this thing called order type and this is unique to us. So we realize that in the wine space we have a lot of unique requirements based on the type of order that we're processing. So for example we may have a slightly different type of requirements and default fields and workflows based on whether this is a sample order or a DI order or even a bill and hold order. So order types let us control those slightly different flows based on the type of order. Now we can default these order types to a particular customer and I can override it if needed as well. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and type in the customer's PO number at the top. We have a feature called co-ops. Now you can use this generally for things like sales organizations and any group membership that this customer is applied against. You can actually be applied against multiple co-ops. But in this case, I can tie an individual order to a co-op and it will default for me as well if necessary. Now let's scroll over on the right. This is what we call the fact box area of the sales order. And I'm gonna scroll down. And by the way, notice the attachments feature here. If I want to go ahead and attach the customer PO, I could do that. We've got built-in document attachment capabilities throughout the system. Now scrolling down, we have what we call the sell to customer history pane. Now these tiles are going to show me at a glance what this customer's purchased in the past. So in this case, I can see at a glance that this customer's purchased two things from us in the past. I can drill into that too and take a look at what they've purchased in the past. In this case, the customer back on 518 made a purchase of the Rapon 2016 Sauvignon Blanc in 12 cases of that. So I can go ahead and sell them the same thing that they purchased last time. So I'm gonna go ahead and collapse the general tab and come down to the lines section. I'm gonna go ahead and sell the Rapon 2016. And I'm going to go ahead and choose the Pino, and I'm going to get an error. And the reason for the error is because the item registration does not exist for the item. Now, this is a good thing. What this is showing me is that we have the capability in the system to manage what items and vintages we can sell to individual regions or states. And if I set it up this way, I can force that setup so that I can't sell to places that I'm not licensed to sell in. So in this case, I've made a mistake. I'm gonna go ahead and change that to the Sauvignon Blanc, which is what they've purchased in the past anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and tab over, and we're gonna key in a quantity of, say, 15 cases. And you're gonna notice this pop-up, and it's gonna say allocations found, you want to apply them. What this is telling me is that the system has allocations. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and say yes, I'm gonna highlight something for you. We know in the wine space that management of this limited pool of certain wines is very, very important. So we utilize something we call reservations and allocations of inventory to do that. So I've pre-created in advance of this sales order something we call an allocation card. Now our allocation cards allow us to assign and say, 
this is how much of a particular item we are allocating. We have date ranges. We can allocate by customer and territory and state, and sales rep and location, among a few other things we call dimensions as well. Now, at a glance, this is telling me that this particular item, we've reserved or allocated a quantity of 1,000, and we've got 925 cases left to allocate. Now, based on setup, what it's done is it's automatically allocated that inventory the second that I keyed in the order. In this case, it's because I've allocated a quantity to myself as a sales rep. So it's pre-established that, and it knew it, and so it automatically chose that on the order. Now let's go ahead and look over on the right. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. And we've got this area called the sales line details. Now this is telling me at a glance for the requested ship date, which I've left as the default in this particular case. But what it's showing me is my availability on that given date. So I've got 904 cases available to me availability is different than what's on hand. On hand means I've got a certain number of cases on hand, but those may be pre-spoken for on other sales orders. So down below, we also have sales pricing in the system, and I can see that at a glance. So in this case, you'll notice that I've got two potentially applicable prices, and I can check those out here. So I can drill into those, and you'll notice that I've got two prices. One is the all customer price of 130. This would be the frontline price or the base price. Now you'll notice that I've got what we call a customer price group price in New York, which is 120. Now this particular customer that I've chosen, it was pre-established with this particular price group. Now that price group could have been anything, retail, DI, whatever. The system will automatically know and it will automatically populate the appropriate pricing. And in this particular case, they got the 120 price. We're going to come back to the order in a second, but I'm going to highlight a couple of other features of our D365 wine trade solution by opening up the item card. And I can do that directly from the sales order itself. Now you'll notice over on the right in my fact box, I've opened up the item card itself, but notice how over on the right, it's telling me what my state categories are. Now these are the areas that I'm licensed to sell in, in this case, Connecticut, New Jersey, and New York. I'm going to go ahead and edit this item master. There are a lot of fields on the item master and I don't have time to cover everything. So I'm going to highlight just a couple of key features here that are unique to our wine trade solution. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to go to the 365 wine trade tab. Now we have a lot of the fields that you would probably expect a wine solution to have, which is the vintage, the origin region code. And I'll show you the subregions here in one second as well. We've got the case pack, the bottle sizing, along with the volumes, both in liters and gallons. Now we can establish different alcohol types, wine, spirit, cider, beer, and alcohol content percentage. Now a lot of these fields are either important in terms of we have different workflow depending on the type of alcohol content, for example, or maybe they're required for tax reasons. But in some cases, these are very, very helpful for reporting, which I'll show you here in a minute as well. Now we have brands as well, which I would establish and I would assign to individual items. We also have under the compliance tab here, we have information saying that this particular item, the label has been approved and that label approval is assigned here. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down again, the state categories, which would be what we're licensed to sell into. Now down below, we have what we call the reviews tab. You'll see it over on the right in the fact box as well. Now this is telling me if any of our wines have been featured in various documents and magazines, you can define what those magazines are and websites and so on and so forth, but you can establish what this score was and various other comments about the wine. Now this is really, really helpful information because once we've established this, it's gonna let me do two things. If I'm talking to somebody on the phone as a customer service person, I can tell them at a glance some information about the wine that they've selected or they're thinking about. But not only that, we can really, we get some valuable information for crunching and doing Power BI based reports. So for example, if I've been featured in Wine Spectator, 
I could see, did that have an impact on my sales the following quarter? So by establishing that, that's going to give me some really, really nice reporting down the road. We have some information here that's going to help me on regulatory, what we call beverage tax reporting, such as the item tax class and the liquor type. We also have the region, subregion, Appalachia, sub Appalachian as well. So in cases where that is important, you define what those are and you would establish those for each item. So I'm going to go ahead and show one more feature here. For an item, we also have the ability to, at a more detailed or granular level, establish what, what items and what vintages and what sales regions that I am licensed to sell into. So again, these are all of the items and states that I'm allowed to sell into. And this is that setup that really drives what I see in the fact box over here. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my sales order. Now, a couple of other key features here. One is what we call beverage tax lines. If I've pre-established and set this up in the system, which I can do because we know that unique states have unique beverage tax regulatory requirements, I can establish different tax rates based on the alcohol percentage and the state that I'm selling into. And I can record the tax liability in the system automatically based on the types of wines and the customer in the state that I'm selling into. Over on the right, I'm going to scroll back up to the top. We have this feature called order reviews. Now, this is purely based on your setup and your requirements as an organization. We found in the wine space, when we're taking huge numbers of orders, it becomes really, really important to manage if something is awry with this particular sales order. And there's certain key things that require a review and approval. So for example, if we've gone over the credit limit for the customer, or if we have a document that's past due for the customer, I'm going to see that under order reviews. So to highlight that, what I'll share with you is I'll go ahead and accidentally change the unit price to something that's very, very high, which by the way, is not a requirement that I'm allowed to do that. I can actually stop people from doing that, but I've gone ahead and accidentally chosen a much higher price of the wine. And you'll notice directly here when I've tried to release this document to the warehouse that I got an over credit limit warning. This is stopping me from proceeding any further until this document has been reviewed. If I had permission, I can go ahead and approve it directly from the sales order, but that's not common. What would typically happen is the person recording the order would release the document and it would go into what we call order review. And then somebody, we have different people within the organization that would access a different screen called order reviews, which would allow them to review and approve these documents either individually or in bulk but it's telling me the reasons why for this particular order, this is under order review. So in this case, over credit limit, and of course I could scroll down and see what the credit limit is and how I've exceeded it. In this case, I've clearly made a mistake. So I'm gonna go ahead and reopen this document. I'm gonna go ahead and change the unit price again. At this point, I could send out the order confirmation via email. I could print it and mail it to them if that's a requirement. Generally, what happened is we would release this order to shipping. Now, at this point, this is where we would generally, at the moment where I release the order, this would go to the warehouse. If you have a warehouse, your warehouse would go ahead and start fulfilling that order based on the shipment date of the order. Or if this goes through one of your 3PLs, this order would be automatically transmitted to your 3PL so that they can fulfill the order. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and post this order. And I can post and send, which would also send the invoice as well at the same time. And I posted the order. So let me go back to my main role center here. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've created a sales order and highlighted a few key features of our wine trade solution, such as the ability to limit what items that I've sold, what vintages of wine I can sell into a particular region, and then a few other things about the order. Taking a step back, I've entered a single sales order, but what's happening behind the scenes in Business Central is we're amalgamating all this great data, financial and sales-based data. So what we do is we tap into Power BI, which is Microsoft's business intelligence platform, to view and analyze that data. 
So we have a number of pre-built Power BI packs for the 365 Line Trade solution. These are a couple of sample reports that I'm going to show you here. But the key here is to note that this is pulling real time from the backend Business Central database using a lot of the custom fields and functionality that we've added. Power BI reports are very interactive. So I can click on fields here and the data will change accordingly. So in this case here, I can click on individual people, individual sales team members, and it will show me a heat map of the locations where I've sold or that particular team member has sold the wine and the volume. The top left here, you'll notice just an at a glance, the total number of cases based on the actual cases versus what we budgeted. So we had a goal of 778, but we're not quite there yet. But this hopefully will give me that incentive I need to cross the finish line. These are just examples. I'll show one more as well. So in this particular case, it's showing me what my on-time ratio is for my sales orders and whether I'm shipping complete or not. About 96% there. Again, these are all interactive reports and they're telling me something very, very valuable without the need to go into the system and run traditional reports, which we certainly can do. But again, this is the power of the Microsoft platform is this allows me to build these really, really nice visual reports for executives and sales teams and financial teams, giving them the key information that they need. So that's all I wanted to share with you today. Like I said, this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what we have in terms of capabilities in the system. And you'll see here, we've got a number of features and I could drill into each one of these in time if I wanted to, but we've got chargebacks. We've got the ability to handle documents in bulk, what we call the document worksheet, which is going to let me send out mass mailings of statements and pro forma invoices and invoices and so on and so forth in the system. We also have price exports, which is going to let me basically upload the pricing for our wines to the states. So in cases where, for example, distributors, this is very, very important. We pre-integrate with a number of states and we have the capability to build your own price exports as well that are slightly unique for each state. Plenty, plenty more. But hopefully this gives you a cross-section of what we've got available in the D3C5 Wine Solution. So if you have any questions, please reach out to us and we are happy to give you a little bit more tailored demo and really highlight some of the other key features in our solution. Thanks for watching.